we are rolling. All right, guys, what's going on? Today we're going to talk about navigating giant field tournaments. Now, the Opens have 225 boats in them. We're lucky on the Elites. We're only going to have around 90 boats next year. We only had a, we only had 100 this year and 88 the first year I fished it. So we're going to be somewhere in that 90 to 100 mark on the elites which makes these lakes a lot more manageable it makes it more often that you actually find some fish and you get them to yourself which is extremely rare in these big giant field tournaments so i'm gonna kind of walk y'all through kind of the, my approach you know i i had some decent success in a lot of the really big field tournaments being the toyotas being the open stuff like that and i'm just going to tell you straight up you got to do your own thing and you got to find your own fish and try to fish away from the crowds as much as you possibly can is my opinion because whenever you have that whenever you fish in the crowd you just add the variance of you not being able to get on your spot so if you spend all the time in practice practicing in one section like on Gunnersville, you practice in one creek of the lake and you've got them in there and they're locked on in there you know you got them exactly dialed in you know where you're going to catch them and then your boat 120 well, there's going to be 20 boats in that creek before you ever get there. And if you've got four or five of them sitting on the four or five sweet spots you thought you found, well, now you're already behind in the rotation and everything that you have that you found, somebody else has already hit it. They've already presented their baits to the active fish on that thing. So, yeah, you might be able to drag around or go super slow and get, generate a couple more bites that they weren't able to generate. But for the most part, you're going to struggle in that tournament trying to fish around a big crowd of people when you're in a bad rotation. Now, if you're the first boat through there and you get to pull up on the sweet spot and catch you a couple good ones, then maybe you might be able to hit two of the sweet spots and catch a couple good ones. Then you can fish around in a crowd, get you a few more bites throughout the course of a day and have a good bag. But if you're getting at the back end of the rotation, more times than not, you're going to struggle until another feeding window comes open, like sometimes it does late in the day or in the mid-morning or something like that. Whenever they start firing again, you know, like the, not, the fish that are there that are not active, they'll start feeding at some point. If you're there and you're the lucky guy whenever they start back feeding, yeah, you can still catch them out of a crowd. But for the most part, you want to find your own fish and you want to be able to kind of get away from the cloud, kind of get away from the crowds because whenever you're in one of those big field multi-day tournaments, the weights drop every single day because the fish get beat up on so bad in those you know certain little areas and nobody's managing those fish because everybody's fishing around so many boats if you don't catch them somebody else gonna catch them when you find your own fish you can well i shouldn't say find your own fish like that whenever you find fish that you have to yourself you can manage those fish a whole lot better if you're on a certain lake where you know that it's going to take 14 pounds a day to get a check and you've already got 17 or 18 and your smallest fish is a, a three pounder or something like that you might want to go run and find some some fresh water some new water to make sure that you don't lean on them fish too hard that are good quality a lot of fish there until day two and you might be able to expand and find some other stuff where you can't do that when you're fishing in a crowd because if you leave somebody else is going to catch them so it'll be better off for you to stay there and you be the one to catch them so that's one of the biggest things is the fish that you find have to be more manageable or else you're going to be out there scrambling around every single day like i typically seem to do is be scrambling every single day and it's just hard over the course of trying to qualify for the elites and the opens it's hard to make those days come together often enough for you to be good enough in points for you to actually qualify for the opens or the toyota series if you're fishing those it's really hard to scramble every single day and not have one of those terrible days like like all of us have from time to time so another thing you have to have a ton of confidence in fishing completely fresh water in the tournament what that means is you're in one of the biggest tournaments of your life. There's 225 boats. Everybody's running around like crazy. There's boats everywhere. And sometimes it'll be 930 and you've done ran through all your best stuff. And there's boats everywhere. And you might have one bass or two bass, something like that. And you have to throw everything out the window and just go fishing. Find new water. Find fresh fish on a lake that you might have only been to, you know, three or four days of practice. And now it's your first time fishing a tournament on that body of water. And you got to go fish some completely random new water a completely random new pattern everything that you haven't found you might have to stop and graph around for a little while and try to find some some new brush piles or ledge or rock piles or shell bars or whatever it may be you might have to graph in the tournament and most people don't seem willing to really commit to that that's what you have to do you got to throw everything down you got to just go start running new water and treat the rest of the day like a practice day with just a little bit more intensity that's one of the things that a lot of my friends that have tried to do it, they seem to struggle with throwing everything out the window and running new water and trying to make it happen whenever you've had a bad morning or whatever, fishing some completely random water. This is a pretty interesting thing that I did one time 
on my very first tournament ever, Saint, on the Bassmaster Elite, St. John's, I actually found this little pocket on Google Earth the night before the tournament. Practice was over. I had never seen this body water before except for on Google Earth. Practice was over, and that's where I started my Bassmaster Elite Series with a piece of, uh, you know, a little pocket that I had never seen before that I was like, man, there's going to be a bass in there. So I ran there. I caught a keeper. I lost a big one, but it didn't work out at all, but that was something that I did that, you know, that's just one of the things that you have to do late in the day that even I struggled with it all year this year. I had a lot of tournaments where I felt like I was just scratching and clawing, trying to get, I need one more keeper. I need one more three pounder to make sure I get in the cut. And it just seemed like I was so close so often to just being one bite away from doing what I need to do that I never really threw everything down and went and ran completely fresh and new water. And that's one of the biggest keys that I can give anybody. And it's not, I'm not saying that like I've mastered it because I definitely haven't, but I know that's what it takes. And I know that's what it takes to have those good results consistently is been able to do that. I struggled with it this year. I was good at it my rookie year on the elites. I kind of struggled with it this year and I'm hoping we get back in that groove going into my third year on the elites so we can have some better tournaments, some more consistent tournaments and have a few more of them dang top tens this year. So hope y'all enjoyed that. That's just kind of a couple of tips that I have on navigating these big giant field tournaments. We're starting to see more and more of them pop up. I know they're having a, uh, it's like a bass pro big turn team tournaments all over the country. It's got uh, just a crazy amount of boats in them. A lot of people are fishing those. So this is, these tips would kind of apply for those also, but when you're in a one day tournament, it's a lot more important to fish where there's the biggest fish on the lake, even if you have to fish on a crowd, because imagine fish is not you know, one of your main concerns. It's all about catching as much as you can catch on that day whenever you're in one of those one day tournaments. So that's just kind of one of the ways that I would kind of tweak it. If I was fishing a one day big field tournament, I would be a lot more excited about fishing in a crowd because a couple of big bites on one day can make you win the tournament. Whereas you're not, you know, too concerned about coming back there on day two and still trying to catch enough weight. One more thing that I forgot to mention, this will be at the end of the video, probably maybe right before the outro. One more thing that I forgot to mention, avoid doc talk at all costs. Yeah, if you travel with somebody, y'all are really close, really good friends, and y'all are going to be able to articulate the correct amount of information to each other where it could be mutually beneficial. I understand. You might want to share info with your buddy or something like that if y'all are on the, kind of the same level and y'all are really telling each other the truth. But for the most part, you want to avoid doc talk at all possible. You hear somebody say, they ain't biting on this, they ain't biting on that, I ain't have but two bites in a week. You know, that's the kind of stuff that you hear all the time going into these tournaments. Everybody says it's so tough to catch a keeper, it's tough to get a bite. Ain't nobody catching a limit. The biggest fish anybody's caught in practice is a pound and a half, and then all of a sudden tournament day, 15 pounds is a check cut. That seems to happen every single tournament, and I still have people tell me they ain't biting, all this type of stuff, and I'm like, it don't matter if they ain't biting, it's gonna take X amount of weight to get paid. So avoid doc talk at all costs, all it can do is kind of spin you into a downward cycle where you're second guessing what you're already doing. So don't worry about doc talk at all. Go out there, find your own fish, do your own thing, maximize what you're doing and don't worry about all the rest of the noise. So it's kind of my tips on navigating those big field tournaments. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you on the next one.